Well, here we go with Hanukkah starting tonight. Christmas right around the corner. A lot of gifts are going to be given. A lot of them are going to require batteries, like lithium-ion batteries, which are a fire hazard. And you might be surprised how often they create fires. Well, there is a company in Watertown called Packaging and Crating Technologies, or PACT, that is on the front line of trying to keep people safe from battery fires. I have PACT President Roger Moore here uh, to tell us more about the problem and the solutions they're working on and some tips from you at home. A lot to get to in the short time we have. Yeah, good morning. Roger, thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Uh, yeah, you were telling me before, uh, you, you talk to firefighters in different parts of the country, and uh, these people might be surprised at just how often lithium-ion batteries are causing fires. Yeah, they're around the country, it's every hour. There's yep. a fire, uh, different things, cars, bikes, toys. Uh, the firefighters come to us and say, can you do something? Like right. standing there helpless, putting water on it, doing nothing. And yeah, things shooting off in every direction scare the hell out of them. I can imagine. And I want to get to solutions in a second, but just to talk more about the problem, I imagine part of the problem is that lithium ion batteries are so ubiquitous. What, what are people most often finding them in? Oh, God, it goes anywhere from little handguns, the Nerf guns that kids use, yeah. radios, um, anything that you charge with a cord at your house. Right. Most likely, 90% chance that it's a lithium battery inside. So we're, we're even adding smartphones, oh, tablets, yeah. and little, little things earpieces like that. on you. E earpieces like yeah. this. Is the problem when people sort of plug them in sometimes, leave them plugged in when they should be, uh, after it reaches full power, taking the plug out? Some of that happens. Uh, these things can actually just go off because they just decided because. to go off. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times, like in bikes in different situations, they don't like to be hit. They don't like to be smashed. Mm. Kid goes along, throws the bike down, the thing takes a few hits, sets it against the house. Maybe it goes off, you know, an hour later. And that sort of sets off what, like a, an uncontrolled thermal reaction? Inside each battery, there's like a whole bunch of these little cells. When yeah. one cell goes off, it literally hits like 350 C, off gases, collects the gas and lithium creates its own oxygen, so it sets that off and explodes. Okay. Well, now that one cell affected five. Yeah. Those five go off, affect 10. Sometimes in these fires, we see like 10 come up in the air and shoot in every direction like yeah. it's uh, 4th of July. But they're shooting molten metal through walls, <laughs> through people, Absolutely. setting the entire house on fire. So the idea is to contain that fire because they're hard to put out. Sometimes you have to just so, sort of let them burn without the right equipment. It seems like that's hard to do. And you're, you're, you're telling us, packed. you can do it essentially with paper? If they were to take the paper, put it inside around each of those cells, yeah. in every test we've done, even drive and a nail through one or a bullet through one, it goes off. But all the ones next to it have no idea there's a fire because our paper sends 60 degrees in every direction and cools the rest of the pack off. Okay. The other batteries need to get, because they're not defective, they right. need heat. Once they get above 200 degrees Fahrenheit, they start going towards their thermal runaways as quickly as possible. Uh, it, uh, I mean, is it a trade secret what this paper is? Can, can you um, tell us more about how it's composed? It's basically made with an ink that we print on both sides of it. When the ink gets to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, yeah. it starts to release moisture in every direction and 60 degrees of coolness in every ah, direction. Okay. So now that cell, when it goes boom with the gas, trying to collect it and go back in so it can explode, yeah. the gas gets humidified. Okay. And when it gets sucked back in, the battery can't get that energy to explode, so it burns inside of itself. And if it's just one cell, it can be over in three to 10 seconds. Got it. If it gets to the rest of the cells, then like in a, a car, 30 hours, still burning. Uh, we're almost out of time. Are there just some basic tips people can do, like general battery health tips to try to avoid the problem in the first place? In my opinion, never charge them inside your house. Okay. Charge them in a garage or someplace where there's no incendiaries. Uh, if you're charging something simple like a cell phone or a tablet, put it out at the edge of the counter where it can't hit the cabinets and catch on fire, mm -hmm. and never put them in your bed. Never? Never. You won't wake up. And if you do have a fire with one, don't even try to run towards it because the gases that are coming off, one breath can kill you. Okay, so get out of the house, call 911. Call 911, and unfortunately, your house probably won't be there when you get done. I'm, I'm sorry to say, <laughs> but hopefully, yeah, PACT is working on a solution so uh, people's lives can be saved and people's property can be saved too. Roger, thank you for oh, taking the time you. to join us. Appreciate it. Very interesting to talk about. I can't say, Rachel, that we've talked about battery fires no. uh, anytime recently, but it's something that we all have, right? and it's some safety precautions we all need to be taking. Yeah, very good information there. Yeah. And I just love listening to him talk about the uh, paper. Uh, that is science to the core, so very interesting stuff.